Today we're starting uh, Unit 2, which is Radical Functions. Uh, 2.1 is our first topic, talking about radical functions and transformations, and that's on pages uh, 62 to 77 in your textbook. Now we have three curriculum outcomes that we'll cover, um, some that we've seen before, uh, 30.7, which uh, the main parts we're talking about, uh, horizontal and vertical translations and horizontal and vertical stretches. 30.8 you've seen before, talking mostly about reflections in the X and Y axis. And uh, the new one is 30.11, where we're going to demonstrate understanding of radical and rational functions with restrictions on the domain. So most of it that we're talking about today is the radical functions. Uh, lesson objectives. Our first one is to learn about the general shape of the graph of a radical function. Our second is to apply transformations to the graph of a radical function. And our third is to apply transformations to the equation of a radical function. So a radical function is a function in which the variable is in the radicand. The radicand is the root sign itself. So an example of that would be, oh, say we have f of x could equal the root of x minus 3. Or we could have g of x. You have to remember that there are like cube roots out there. So we could have the cube root of 2 times x minus 5 plus 4. Those are just two examples of radical functions. So the general shape of a radical function can be found by completing a table of values and plotting the points. We've done this for functions in the past. Note, after we do this the first time, we should no longer need to use a table of values. We're just doing this to find the general shape. So here's our function. It's y equals root x, or this could say f of x equals root x as well. So if I plug in an x value of 0, I should get a y value of 0. If I plug in an x value of 1, I take the square root of that, it remains 1. If I put in the next number I should put in here, it's probably a perfect square, so I'll take x and put in an x value of 4, and the square root of that is 2. An x value of 9 would give me a y value of 3, an x value of 16, y value of 4, x value of 25, y value of 5. So let's take a look at what this would look like. Here we've got a coordinate plane. So I'll plot a 0, 0, a 1, 1. We've got 4, comma, 2. We've got 9, comma, 3. And we've got 16, comma, 4. And I can't fit that last point in there. But that's fine, because we now know the general shape. Excuse the, the poorly drawn line. Now. Other important things is that we should take a look at the domain of this function. So the domain, if you remember, is how far it goes from left to right. This function will go on forever to the right. So our domain is described by the letter x, and it says that x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, because it's everything to the right of 0. And since there's no gaps in that, that is all the real numbers as well. So it's all the real numbers that are greater than 0. Now our range, um, our range is a result after we take the square root, and, or in other words, the y values. Now this function will continue to go upwards as well, just not at as such a steep increase as the domain. So our range will actually be the same as well. So we've got y, and y is greater than or equal to 0, and y is all the real numbers. So the next thing I want to show you is just um, how transformations affect radical functions. And hopefully you'll learn from this little part of the lesson that everything that we learned in the last unit still holds true. So the first function I've got here is the blue function. And that is f of x equals x to the power of 0 0.5, which if you remember, x to the power of 0 0.5 is the same thing as x to the half, which we said is the same as root x. So that's just our base function, our normal root function. So the blue graph is f of x equals x to the power of 0 0.5. Now, let's take a look and see at our red graph. And it says here that it's going to be x plus 3 to the power of 0 0.5. So if you remember from last unit, when it's x plus 3 inside the brackets, that should mean a horizontal shift of 3 units to the left. Let's see if that happens. And there's our red graph. Every point has been moved three units to the left. Yeah, 
there we go. So this point here, point A has been moved three units to the left, point B moved three units to the left, point C three units to the left, and point D also three units to the left. All right, our next graph that we're gonna take a look at is h of x, where it's x to the power of 0 0.5, and then we add a three onto that whole function, which means that we should have a vertical shift of three units up. And when we take a look at our green graph, it is definitely three units higher in every point. So point A has been moved three units up, Point B has been moved three units up, and point C has been moved three units up. Point D also moved three units up. So again, when we add a constant onto the end of our function, there's a vertical shift or a vertical translation of three units. And finally, the purple function, which is P of X, is two X to the power of 0 0.5. Now, hopefully you remember that that would be a horizontal stretch of a factor of a half. So remember, anything inside that bracket always kind of behaves opposite of what you would think. So all these points, A, B, C, and D, should all be changed by a factor of a half. So we look at our purple function, and indeed, point A, because it already had an x value of 0, is invariant, or it means it doesn't move, so it stays where it is. Point B was at an x value of 1, it's now at an x value of a half. Point C was at an x value of 4, it's moved over to an x value of 2. And point D, which was at 9, has moved all the way to 4.5. So this is just to show you that all those things that we talked about in terms of transformations of functions still apply. It doesn't matter what the function looks like, or what the equation looks like, sorry, all those same things apply. So our final example is if f of x equals root x, then sketch the graph of g of x, which equals 2 f of negative 2 times x minus 4 minus 3. So when we're sketching these sort of things, it's always nice to just know the main points of the original graph. Since we're talking about root x, our main points are 0 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 4 comma 2, and 9 comma 3. Now remember when we're doing these sorts of things that we always do the stretches first. So this two out in front means that we multiply all the y values by two. So this first point stays as a zero. Next one becomes a two. Next one becomes a four. Last one becomes a six. The negative two inside the brackets means that all the x values change by a factor of negative half. We still have a zero here this becomes negative half, this becomes negative two, and this becomes negative four and a half. Now, now we can apply the two uh, translations. So the horizontal translation, x minus four, means that it moves four units to the right. So all our x values are now moving four units to the right. So it was a zero, it becomes a four. It was a negative half, it becomes a negative three and a half. This was a two, be, negative two, sorry, it becomes a positive two. And this was a negative four and a half, it becomes a negative half. And I realize that this is positive three and a half. And finally, our y values all change by negative three. So we subtract three from each value, we get a zero here. It was zero, sorry, it's now negative three. This was 2, it's now negative 1, was 4, it's now positive 1, and it was 6, so now it's positive 3. So in plotting these points, we got 4 comma negative 3, which is right down here. We've got 3 and a half comma negative 1. We've got 2 comma 1. And we've got negative a half comma 3. So we can just see how this whole function, which was root x, has now changed into 2f of negative 2, x minus 4, minus 3. So in summary, 
There's a distinct shape to a normal graph of a radical function. We know what that looks like now. We know that it has a domain of x being greater than 0 and a range of y being greater than 0. And we also know that if there's a translation occurring, so if it moves left or right, the domain will change. And if it moves up or down, then your range would change. And we do need to remember all the things we learned about transformations of functions last unit because they apply to radical functions. So we're talking about stretches, translations, and reflections. And finally, your assignment is on page 72 to 77. Good luck.